Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the 10 gig series. I uh, One of the projects I'm trying to do is to build a 10 gigahertz beacon for terrestrial use. I want to put it up on the uh, club repeater tower on a local hill where I have a repeater and the uh, club has a uh, repeater. I have permission to put a uh, 10 gig beacon up there, so I'm trying to build a 10 gig beacon. And uh, I'm trying to find a proper exciter for it. So, uh, most of you uh, might think this is my first video on that subject. Actually, it's the second. I did one yesterday uh, and realized that I had uh, gone down a, a very poor path. Uh, technically, I'd made some mistakes in my approach and some mistakes in the video. And so... Um, I've removed that video and I'm starting over. So my first approach to a beacon exciter uh, was to use a Leo Bodner GPS reference clock. Um, some other members of the community have reported success, some success with that, feeding the, uh, the Leo Bodner into a W1GHZ personal beacon board, which is designed to be a times 9 multiplier from 1152 megahertz to 10 gigs. Uh, the Leo Bodner won't go to 1152, but some have reported success uh, programming it for 576 megs and multiplying up uh, times 18 from there with the W1GHZ board. In any case, if that didn't work for me, I could always just put a doubler in between to go from 576 to 1152, and then from there to uh, 10 gig. So that was my first approach at a beacon exciter. I already had two of these Leo Bodner reference clocks, the dual output ones, laying around left over from my 2200 meter adventure. So if they could be used as a beacon exciter, uh, let's go for that. That would be great, since I already had them. Uh, so in this video, I'll show you my results with those and why I decided to uh, seek a different approach. Okay, so here's the Leo Bodner GPS uh, reference clock. This is a dual output unit. I have it programmed to generate 576 megahertz exactly. And at that frequency it looks pretty clean. Here's a 100 kilohertz span. If I widen the span out wider it's still pretty clean. This, only these real spurs I can see here are pretty weak. Um, at, uh, I don't know, 25 kilohertz or so either side of, of the fundamental. And they're about 70 dB down, so I have no problem with that. That would be fine. But I don't want the beacon on this frequency on, on 10368.0. So let me go over here and see if I can uh, see what I'm doing while uh, still holding the camera to change this frequency. If I change it to 576.020. And uh, click Find to let it update. That would put the beacon on 10368.360, which would be which would be great. But look what's happened now. It's not clean anymore. It's got uh, some strong spurs here, about 32 dB down or so, 31 to 32 dB down, at uh, 20 kilohertz either side of center. And then it's also got more spurs at 40 and 60 kilohertz out and and so on. They're a little weaker, but they're there. So I don't like that at all. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting that on the air. And I have experimented with many frequencies uh, all up and down to put this somewhere in that uh, range that I want to be. And it's just not clean. It constantly has spurs. The Frequency spacing between the fundamental and the spurs changes, but the amplitude of the spurs does not change significantly. So it would be clean at 10368.0, but not clean at uh, somewhere between 10368.3 and 10368.4. So I have essentially discarded this idea. I just um, I just don't like putting all these uh, all these spurs on the air, and they're so close in that I don't know how to filter them out. Um, effectively. So um, that was that for the uh, Leo Bodner GPS reference clock as far as using it as a beacon exciter.